This is the Annihilate Knives Tactical Fixed Blade Survival Knife. That's how it's listed on Amazon. Uh, this is made by a company called Zunlotu out of China. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and they reached out to me and and sent me a picture of this knife and said, you want to check this out? And uh, you know my tastes. I looked at it and I said, oh, recurve tanto, eh? Yeah, I'll check it out. And they sent it to me. And um, so I'm going to I'm gonna tell you what I think of this knife. Uh, first of all, it comes in a very nice sheath. I'm going to show you how it came. Uh, pretty nice Kydex sheath, uh, I should say. Very nice attachment system, though. It's got like this. Uh, it's either an actual, I guess it's a an off-brand um, uh, tech lock. It works great. Uh, so this is how it ships for 89 bucks. This is an $89 knife on Amazon. It ships with that. And then it comes in this nice little box. I thought this was a nice touch with the little hay and stuff. And then it's got an interesting little pamphlet in it. We support all just causes. Annihilate. And they have a, a way, you know, different ways to use the knife. Identifying the parts of your knife, Kydex scabbard, open method, wearing method, original design. The Annihilate knife is an original product designed independently by Zoom Lotu. The knife head is geometric and has strong penetrating power. The blade is from the separation to the tip, very sharp to cut easily. You get the idea. Uh, they, they put some thought into this design and uh, want to highlight it. Um, and so this comes in there and I like this, uh, I like this little straw bit. But let's talk about this knife. This knife is an enigma wrapped in a conundrum, wrapped in a mystery. This is um, because it, it has a lot of things and, and it's advertised to do a lot of things. And chief, chief among them, I mean, they call it a tactical survival knife. And um, obviously it's tactical. Look at the design. Um, the survival part is a little interesting to me um, because to me, I see the tactical. Oh my gosh, look at, the, look at that long slashing curve. Very nice. Coming to that excellent secondary tip, very useful secondary tip for utility and also for fighting. Uh, but then also look at that recurved forward portion with that tip that is so supported by that, uh, that geometry. This would make an outstanding a tactical blade in terms of thrusting and penetrating things that are trying to stop you from penetrating them. And then in terms of slashing and laying something open with this curved uh, blade. Yeah, I see this as being a tactical knife. Now it's pretty heavy. I would imagine there is no cutout on the tang just with the weight I'm feeling in the handle. Um, though it is it is pretty well balanced, but this is a thick slab of of what they're calling D2. Oh, I shouldn't say it like that. Of D2, I'm, I, I'll take them at their word. Um, so the thing that vexes me a little bit is this bevel. It is so audaciously short, I don't quite understand why. And, and, and I'm wondering, like part of me was thinking, are they going for kind of a Scandinavian effect, but with a different primary, with a, with a regular traditional primary v-ground edge i mean it is it is pretty sharp i gotta say here I have this. oh wait so yeah i mean it's, it's it's oddly sharp for how fat it is behind the edge uh but i'm wondering where, yeah were they going for a sort of scandy ground edge here and then a, you know, secondary bevel, like, uh, kind of like Tops does, except with a, just a taller bevel here. Um, I don't know. Uh, so that that's a, a curiosity to me. Um, it, it actually works well. I, I just don't understand the design. Uh, it really is a bit of a, a slab of steel. I mean, it, it is. So my, my point is, if you took this, if you ground from here to right behind the edge, just a straight edge or just a straight flat bevel, you would reduce a bunch of weight and it would still be strong. I, I So it must be this geometry they're going for. So um, that's what I'm going to go with. It's sort of a Scandi 
main edge with a with a with a, a sort of Scandinavian uh, main edge with a secondary bevel meets a chisel tip for thrusting. So very interesting blade here. Uh, I like that there's a choil there, so you can come up and 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 work with that. I see that this curve could be used well as a pull knife in a survival situation. You would just want to take a stick or something and stick it on the end of that so that point isn't there. But that, that sort of gradual curve would be nice for, for planing off wood. Uh, you have a thumb ramp here that you can easily put your thumb over if you, if you like that with that kind of task. Sometimes large quillions can be a pain in the butt on survival style knives. Um, this handle, it's funny, they say they address the handle uh, in the literature here. They say, the handle is designed with bumps for perspiration and slip. So, but these, these are really high, really high peaks. This feels awesome with gloves on. It's almost like a massage through your gloves. Um, Barehanded, not too long. You're not going to be using this for too long uh, barehanded. Uh, and I know you're saying, hey, but Bob, you work in an office. Your hands are not calloused. Okay, I get that. But but still, you, you want it to be as comfortable as it can be for as long as it can be, uh, is, is how I feel about it. And these very tall peaks uh, become a little bit too much to grip barehanded after a while. But that's really nice G10. I mean, the milling, it's all very well considered and well done. Uh, just might not be as uh, universal, universally comfortable with these giant peaks without gloves. I do like this sort of thumb area here, though. If you're using a, a pinch grip, it gives you really good purchase on a pinch grip. Um, I'm not sure what people use pinch grips for, maybe for uh, cutting things sideways like this. If you're, or, you know, I don't know. I've seen uh, people use it tactically with a dagger. You know, you see old pictures of guys with Fairbairn Sykes pinching them like this. Uh, but um, I like that little that little detail. Nice, uh, very uh, substantial lanyard slot. You've got a, a noggin knocker on the back here, uh, which I could do without. As a matter of fact, I would love the shape of that handle without it. It would be perfect for, for uh, reverse grip for putting your thumb over, that is the perfect shape, just minus that that thing there. But I think that protrusion is for uh, is to continue this flat space, so you can use it to pound stuff. Uh, you could also maybe use it as a glass breaker, though it doesn't come to an acute peak. Uh, bolted on handle scales. Now I know you've seen as I've flipped this around, it you've you've noticed. Uh, you've gazed at the spine of this knife, and you have noticed this, as I have. And this is something I don't get. Uh, if you look here, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight, eight to ten striations here in the steel, as if uh, it's been uh, pressed together but not fully welded? I don't understand why we see the lines here. I don't get what that's all about. You can even see that as we run down the spine of the blade and come down to the tip. You see, you can see those lines, uh, if you look carefully, where it's been sort of somewhat polished. Uh, but here, you can see him plain as day, and I just don't get it. I don't understand what that is. Is that a concern? Is that, are those gonna like slip apart? I don't think so, but I've just never seen that. So I'm curious about that. Um, is that in any way an indicator of, well, what does this mean? Just someone tell me. All right, uh, so there it is. I'm gonna show this with a couple of other sort of tactical slash survival knives here and uh, just for a size comparison so you get an idea of what this thing is uh, like here it is with the SRK the cold steel SRK that stands for survival rescue knife of course such a great knife a classic great size uh, that's one thing about this annihilate knives uh, uh, the, uh, w another thing that I like about it is that it's got a this is a, a great size for both 
survival and, you know, tactical kind of stuff, I think. Um, here it is with the Buck 119, a classic outdoor kind of survival-y kind of knife. Hunting, more hunting. Yes, here it is with something a little bit more its size. The Tops Knives Tex Creek. Oh, great knife, great knife, great knife. Love that thing. It's gotten a lot of use over the years and seen a little bit of abuse. I swung once and missed and hit a chain link fence bit and, and chipped it out a little bit. And it, it did not take me too long to get that 1095 unchipped and razor sharp again. So great knife. I love tops. They do an awesome job. Uh, and then, oh, here's another one that is really apropos and about the same size. This is the Ritter Hogue RSK Mark III. What a great, gr is this the three? Yeah, this is the three. What a great knife. Love this knife. That high flat grind, outstanding. So another survival -y st uh, style knife, much thinner blade. So much thinner blade than the than the Annihilate knives, but thinner, or about to, actually that's the same width as the tops. So this is a good good size for um, survival. I mean, this would be a great knife to pry with. I mean, look, it, it maintains most of its thickness down to here. It starts to bevel gradually from this line to this line, and then it's got that sort of steep Scandinavian bevel uh, before it gets to that final grind. So interesting knife. Uh, as, I, as I said, it, 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 it performs oddly, <laughs> surprisingly well with, uh, so this I used for feather sticking at the, uh, and, and by feather sticking, all I'm really actually feather sticking is that kilned wood that you get uh, from the grocery store. It's for our, our family fire pit. We'll get that. I'll use my uh, Cold Steel Trail Master to baton the knives, uh, baton the wood into kindling, and then I'll take one of the kindling and I'll, I'll, I'll do a feather stick. And I can usually, with a Bic, get that lit. You know, I'm no, no survival expert. But this, uh, like I said, this is when I discovered that uh, maybe this isn't a kooky design. Maybe they are really going for that sort of Scandinavian thing because it does make good, uh, it did make good um, little curls. And didn't even, yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean, yeah, D2, Annihilate Knives. So, and it's like an acid stone wash. And, uh, yeah. So this is, uh, thanks Zoon Lotu for sending this knife to me. Uh, it's been, it's been interesting. I, I was a little skeptical at first. Uh, and, um, I still have some questions like the steel. I don't get that. I, I need to know about that. And uh, I'm not exactly sure I agree with the price, uh, but what you get for it, besides this cool box, is uh, the knife and, and this excellent sheath and an awesome tech lock style uh, knife. So, or, or a clip. So there you go. That's it. The Annihilate Knives Tactical Knife Survival Knife. And you can check this out on Amazon. Thanks for watching.